Keloke, I've received a lot of questions regarding the character creation process behind all the animations that I make and the still renders that I create. So I finally decided to show you a little bit of the process behind it. The first thing that I do is I loaded a Genesis 8 model from Daz and I apply a morph target. Is it a morph or is it a cat? I think it's a character. I apply a character that I like, which is the Aliana character, I believe. And then I go ahead and um, apply different textures to it modify the faces using different morphs so I can get a good looking model. After I'm done applying all of my changes, I like going into the parameters tab and typing subdivision level and then I bring that down to zero. When I'm exporting the body, I like to keep it in zero, but I actually go back into Daz and do a subdivision one or two for the teeth because as you can see here, I lose a lot of resolution when keeping the body in resolution zero. So. Um, I have to go back once I'm in Blender and I realize that my teeth are messed up. I like exporting in subdivision zero because I don't want Blender to crash. So if you don't want Blender to crash, just export it in subdiv zero and then just add a subdivision surface modifier once you're in Blender or a multi-rest modifier so you can sculpt high details on your model. Once I'm happy with the model, I go ahead and export as an OBJ and use a Blender preset that I have and click on export UV tiles. Once I'm into Blender, I import it as an OBJ and then I add a floor and also a sun lamp just so I can better see the textures when I'm modifying them. I also like adding an HDRI for better lighting and so I can see the textures a little bit better and they can look a little bit more realistic. One of the first textures that I fix is the lashes. I import texture map and then input it as non-color and input that socket into the alpha channel in the principal BSDF. Once I'm done doing that, I move on to the rest of the body textures and I input the displacement textures that didn't come in with it. OBJ and then I change those texture maps to non-color, the ones that need to be non-color, which are the normal map, the displacement, and the roughness maps. I love playing around with the specular levels and the roughness. You're going to see that in a little bit, uh, just so I can add a little bit of sheen to the skin and it can look a little bit more natural and a little bit more alive. I usually don't go crazy with those input numbers, but if you're going for that really glossy effect, you can go ahead and bump those numbers up or down, and then also you can add a clear coat so it can look more like a fantasy character, which I love sometimes. I cannot stress it enough, make sure you put in the normal map uh, texture as non-color because if you don't, then the lighting is going to affect the model and you're going to be able to see the geometry under the model. Well, on the model. If I want the character to look a little bit more realistic, something that I like to do is adding subsurface, a subsurface value to this shader. Um, and I like doing that by getting a color ramp, using the geometry input node and adding the pointiness socket into the factor of that color ramp, and then playing around with those values so I can bring a little bit of redness to the nose, the ears, and the lips. So if you just want to do a quick fix on adding a little bit of realism to your character, which isn't really realistic, but it does go a long way, you can use a color ramp, use the input socket for the geometry, and then you can kind of fake it a little bit. I like keeping all the textures similar. So once I'm done, when I find a value that I like with the subsurface, I go ahead and copy the entire setup and then just paste it to all of the other materials in the body. Usually this takes a long time. I'm sure there's a way that you can do it faster. You can probably do it faster using the DAS to Blender import um, add-on, but I've always had issues with it. So I rather not even use it. So you can just go ahead and copy and paste and just add those, those extra maps. I forgot to mention, but make sure to change the cornea and the eye moisture shader to transmission. So you're able to see the eyes underneath. Once I finish fixing my textures, I like separating the eyes, the lashes, the teeth from the body so I can prepare for the rigging process in which I will be using Auto Rig Pro. This add-on is paid, but it saves so much time. So if you are working in character animation, I beg you to consider investing in it. So I like separating the eyes and naming them. I right, I left, and then I go ahead and go back, like I mentioned before, and bring back the teeth so I can have a better subdivision on it. Also, as I'm prepping for the rigging process, I like creating a shape key and then going into sculpt mode and reshaping the face and the body by just grabbing some of the areas and um, sculpting on them. Like I mentioned before, I go back into that and re-export the teeth with a higher subdivision level. I open the mouth so I can see. I know it looks creepy AF right now, 
but actually healthy. And you can see the difference in the teeth. Now they look like normal teeth. Before, they look like demon teeth, which I hated. Um, anyways, I'm using the same procedure, exporting the OBJ and bringing it back. And then I'm just separating the body from the teeth and just keeping the teeth and deleting everything else. I recorded this entire process, so I'm also going to show you how I prep for hair. Here I'm selecting all of the faces for the scalp that I will be separating and using this for the hair cap for the hair room. So you're welcome. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I <laughs> Damn. Once I'm done separating the cap, I go ahead and try to fix the teeth a little bit. They look so yellow, like she hasn't seen a mouthwash or a teeth toothbrush in ages. So I go ahead and fix that. And then I add a little bit of roughness because it fits in the mouth. It's supposed to be wet. Big pause. I did not know how that sounded. But anyways, um, once I am happy with the character, I go ahead and do the landmarks on Autoric Pro and then I do the face landmarks as well. Um, this is a pretty easy process. There's tons of videos on YouTube where you can watch a more in-depth explanation on how to rig an Autoric Pro. This makes it so much easier than just using the vanilla blender and just rigging it by your damn self. So once I do that, I go ahead and adjust the armature that Autorig Pro gives me and make sure that it looks correctly. And then I go ahead and do the rig and I match the rig to the body so the rig can move the body. Autorig Pro does a great job at rigging and weight painting. They do the best they can, I guess. But I like to go in and um, change a few things and test things out to see how the rig moves the body moves the body so i go ahead and fix the weight paints on all of the parts of the body that i think look a little cray cray i usually look for a reference of somebody that has already rigged the character online so i can have some reference to how it's supposed to look um, the teeth usually come messed up like when you open the jaw the teeth just go everywhere they're not going where they're supposed to go and the tongue usually messes up but this is also my fault because I use a blender version that is very old because I have an add-on for the hair that I really like that um, I only have in that version because I can't even I can't out myself I got it from another account so I can't I, I really have to use this this one and I don't like the new blender hair so I'm just sticking with this blender version. Anyways, I go ahead and fix the teeth, the body, and everything else that needs to be fixed in the weight painting rig. I know it's not a room, but just let's act like it is. The sculpting room, the painting room, I don't know. This is the part that really bothers me the most, the tongue, because I have to hide so many things in the mesh, so I am able to actually paint in that area that it's, it's really annoying. And I don't know, it should be separated, but I think the tongue is with the body. Anyways, once I'm happy, or I think I did a decent job at the way painting, I like moving the rig and seeing how it deforms the body. So I can just go back and forth and repaint um, the areas that are not looking particularly good. Usually it's the ear. Yeah, it tends to be messed up and it moves the entire skull and I just want the tip of the ear to move. Um, also, the fingers, they tend to deform very weirdly. The teeth, like I mentioned before, and sometimes the lips. So I think it's good practice to move your rig around while you're weight painting so you can see how everything looks. Like you can see the teeth were moving with the lips. So I was canceling those out and making them move so they don't move when I move the lips, just the lips move. So make sure you test things out and you move the rig as you are painting because that can help a lot. The wrist is also one of those areas that tend to look a little bit crazy. I also went back and fixed the lips a little bit. I added a mask and also a mix node and I mixed it with a color uh, so I can add a little bit of rosiness to the lips. So that's pretty much it for part one. I will be showing you guys how to do the hair on the next part. I don't know if I will do a voiceover but I will probably just show you the entire process of creating the hair and then see what I have. I think also doing makeup and blender is part of one of the things that I recorded in this whole 
whole long process. So I don't know. Stay tuned if that's something you're interested in. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you for staying this long. You are one of the greatest. Have a great day.